Now we're ready to talk about applications of iterated integrals. And it turns out we already know a few applications. Um, notably, we know how to calculate the area of a plane region, uh, D, as a double integral. Uh, we integrate over the region D with respect to the area differential to get the area. We know how to use triple integrals to find volumes of regions in space by integrating over the region, integrating the volume differential to get volume. Um, and then we also know the average value of a function f that attains, it attains over its region d, one over the volume of d, uh, which we can find as a triple integral, and then a triple integral over the same region d of the function f of, uh, with respect to the volume differential. Um, there's a similar version of that for double integrals as well for regions in the plane. So let's add to this though, um, a little bit of new material, some uh, with particular respect to moments of and center of mass. Uh, to build up to that just briefly, let's kind of remember what we learned about single variable cal in single variable calculus about center of mass. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. So mass and density. We know that density is mass over volume, which can be rearranged into density times volume equals mass. So think of an infinitely thin rod oriented along the x-axis with constant x-axis with constant density, uh, delta. And that, in that case, the mass is equal to density times area. It's real, real thin, infinitely thin rod. And when you're talking about something that's, that's infinitely thin, area is approximated by length. So we have mass is equal to delta times length. And the length of that rod along the x-axis, let's just say it goes from the over the interval a to b is going to be b minus a. So you take that idea and expand that extend that a little bit further and we ended up with the mass of a one-dimensional object with variable density of over the interval from a to b uh, of delta with variable density delta x is given by an integral mass is equal to the integral from a to b of delta x dx we can take and extend that idea to iterated integrals in two and three space uh, what we need is a closed bounded region um, and we're gonna give that region a density function delta. And this can be a variable density function. So then the mass in two space for region D is the double integral over D uh, integrating the density function. Similarly in three space, you integrate the region over the region D, you integrate the density function to get the mass. And then moments in two space, well, you can read the formula. So I'll just address the three space one. Uh, moments in three space, you have the moment about the X, Y, plane as given as a triple integral over the region D in three space of Z times your density function. And I'm sorry, all of these should be, whoops, not D, but rather delta X comma Y comma Z. They should have the third variable in there. Okay. So once we have moments and mass, we can find the center of mass, similar to what we did in single variable calculus. So for the same closed bound region D in two or three space respectively with the density function delta, we have the center of mass given by for two space X bar Y bar is gonna be uh, the moment about the X axis over your mass for the X coordinate of the center of mass and the moment about the Y axis over mass for the coordinate. Uh, for the center of mass, the y coordinate. Similarly, we have a similar formula for three space, where the x coordinate is given by the moment about the um, about the yz plane over the mass, and similar for the y coordinate and z coordinate, x and y bar and z bar, respectively. So let's work an example. Uh, let's find the center of mass of an object of constant density delta bounded by z equals zero and z is equal to four minus y squared minus, uh, I'm sorry, my, four minus x squared minus y squared. And we've got an image of what that region looks like off to the right there. And so let's set up our limits of integration. Before we do that, let's kind of think about this and say, all right, we've got a region that is constant density and so symmetry tells us that our coordinates for the X and Y 
uh, coordinate for our center of mass are going to have to be zero, zero. And so intuitively think about it this way. Imagine that that bell-shaped thing has a constant density throughout and you wanted to sort of balance it on a pinpoint. Well, I know it's a solid thing, so that might be a little different, but imagine it wasn't and you could kind of put a pinpoint right there and that, that would want to balance right there. Uh, if you wanted to put that point over there somewhere in that above that point in the xy plane, it wouldn't want to balance and it would kind of swing down like that. So symmetry tells us that our x and y component have to be zero. So all we have to find for this one is the z component of the center of mass. And in order to find that, we'll need the mass, which should be a triple integral, sorry. And then we'll need the moment about the z plane. Sorry, not the z plane, the x, y plane. So now we're ready to set up our limits of integration. So to do that, I'm thinking that since we have a, a circular, uh, if we were to project this down into the x, y plane, we'd have a circular sort of domain of integration. So I could think, I think cylindrical or polar coordinates are a really good idea here. All right, so let's try and do this. Let's imagine what we're gonna get. We're gonna take any point in that projection and we're gonna get our vertical slices like that. And from that, I can see that my z bounds are gonna be z is equal to zero. And then at the top, it's gonna be z is equal to four minus x squared minus y squared. But since I said, let's use polar coordinates, let's just go ahead and convert that to four minus r squared. Again, factoring out that negative one, then you have a negative one times x squared plus y squared. R squared is the same thing as x squared plus y squared in polar coordinates. So good enough. We have our innermost uh, limits of integration. So now we have to deal with our projection. So let's just kind of sketch our projection of this, this, uh, this solid region down into the xy plane. We're going to use polar coordinates here. So we're going to get a circle. And it looks like that circle, if you're to set z equal to zero in this equation, zero is equal to four minus x squared minus y squared. Well, that's the same thing as x squared plus y squared equals to four, and that's a circle of radius two. So we're gonna let x, well, we're not doing this in terms of rectangular coordinates, we're gonna use polar. So what are our limits of integration for a polar setup gonna be? Well, we're gonna let theta vary all the way around. So theta, goes between two pi and zero. So now we just have to think about what R is gonna be. And to generate this entire region, for each of those angles, we have segment and let it vary from length zero all the way out to two. So we're gonna let R vary from zero to two. And now we've got the outer two um, limits of integration. And so, in general, both of these integrals, if we're just focusing on this part of it, just the integral over d, then we're gonna have integral, oops, need a pen. We're gonna start with our innermost integral, z is equal to zero, to z is equal to four minus r squared dz. Now, out here we have dr d theta, but don't forget, whenever you use polar, you've gotta use, you've gotta make sure you account for that area differential there. So we're gonna have R. And so now let's go ahead and put the limits in for our R and theta integrals respectively. So R varies from zero to two and theta varies as is quite common between zero to two pi. So now we've done it, we've got all that set up and we'll summarize that on the next slide there. And so in general, both of those integrals are gonna set up like this um, and with respect to the moment integral, notice that we're gonna integrate z, but we're also gonna include that delta. But in addition to that, since we've got this, we're gonna to need to account for that in the integrand of our moment as well. And so I did that. So we've got our moment. We're going to integrate, do the same typical integral with the same limits of integrations, uh, but our integrand is gonna be z times delta times r. Now. If you're clever, delta is a constant. And so there's nothing stopping us from just taking that delta and moving it out there. In fact, 
that's what maybe I'll do to start off with. If I advance this slide, we'll lose things. So, so we're gonna let this sit. So let's just tackle, uh, we'll come back to the mass integral. Let's first, let's just worry about this integral here, that triple integral. So first things first, let's do the innermost integral of that. And that means we want to integrate z is equal to zero and z is equal to four minus r squared with our integrand now being zr dz. Because remember, we took that delta and we, we're going to pop that out in front and let this become delta. I'll go ahead and write it. Okay, so when we do this integral, what we're going to get is we are going to get one half, we're integrating with respect to z, so r is a constant, one half r times z squared evaluated between those bounds for z. Now, as uh, z is in both of those expressions, the z is equal to zero, it's not gonna contribute anything, and we're gonna have one half r times four minus r squared quantity squared. Okay, so there's our, our new uh, integrand for our middle integral. So with those changes made, we go ahead and slap that uh, additionally. Notice here that what can we outside? I'm a big fan of popping things outside right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and when I rewrite that, I'm gonna say, all right, what do we got? So our integral, let's give this thing a name. Uh, equals delta, well, just we'll just call this circle star. So popping that one half out in front, we're gonna get delta over two m integral, integral. I'm not writing in the bounds because it's summarized on the next slide, but each of these integrals are this and this, your outer two most integrals with your, as respectively. And the integrand is gonna be four times r minus r squared, quantity squared. And then we're gonna have dr d theta left. So went ahead and popped. Let's do it with a different color highlighter. Went ahead and pop that out in front to join delta and the mass. So written pretty prettily uh, with a typo there, we need a squared quantity here that I left off. All right, so let's tackle this middle integral. I know there's only two showing, but this was the middle integral of the, of the larger problem, so to speak. So I'm gonna call this the middle integral, even though it's the inner of the only ones that are currently displayed. Okay, so what are we integrating? We are integrating from r is equal to zero to r is equal to two. And uh, the integrand is gonna be r, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, let's just go ahead and expand this while we're at it as we're rewriting things. That's gonna give us 16 minus eight r squared plus r to the fourth power d r. We'll need to distribute that r before we integrate. So from r is equal to zero to r is equal to two. When we distribute that r, we're gonna get 16 r minus eight r to the third plus r to the fifth d r. Now we're ready to integrate that. When we integrate that, we're gonna get this expression. We're gonna get 16 over two r squared, which is gonna give us eight r squared minus eight over four, which is two r to the fourth plus one sixth r to the sixth power. We're gonna evaluate that from r is equal to zero to r is equal to two. Once again, since we've got a multiplication by r for each one of these terms, that zero is not gonna contribute anything. Now we're gonna get eight times two squared minus two times two to the fourth, substituting in two for r plus one sixth times two to the sixth power. Go ahead and do that fraction math and we're gonna get 32 thirds. And so the integrand for our outermost function, just as 32 thirds, ends up being pretty nice. So revisiting that back to our, our bigger problem, we're only left with one integral here, and we're going to do the integral of 32 thirds. Del theta is just 32 thirds theta, and we're going to evaluate that from theta equals zero. Well, that's not going to contribute anything to two pi. So we're gonna get 32 thirds times two pi, which is how we ended up with 30, I mean, 64 thirds uh, 
pi. And then we saw this, whoops, sorry. Let's undo that if I can. Yep, there we go. So this gives us this. This came along for the ride and then put it all together and you get that 32 delta pi divided by three times the mass. So now that we know that, we are finally ready to come back for the mass. Let's, re let's figure out what m is equal to. Well, so the triple integral is going to have the same bounds, same everything. The only difference is we're not going to integrate uh, x, y, or z because we're not doing a moment here. We're just doing the mass. So we've got the r from our area differential, and then we've got delta because we're interested in mass. As delta is a constant, we can go ahead and pop that out in front of things, and we'll probably go ahead and so let's uh let's actually just make that decision. Let's uh let's go ahead and get rid of this. It's not reducing, but rather it's moving. It's it's a constant, and so we can just move delta outside. My deltas sometimes look like musical notes, and I feel like they're worse things in the world than that. Okay, so our inner integral, we are integrating from z is equal to zero to four minus r squared. We're integrating r with respect to z. That's going to give us r z evaluated from z not r is equal to zero to four minus r squared. The zero is not going to contribute anything since we've got multiplication by z. So we're going to have r times four minus r squared. Distribute that through to get four r minus r to the third power. That's going to be the integrand for our middle integral, which is with respect to r. So r is equal to zero to two. Our integrand is 4r minus r to the third power with respect to r. That's going to give us 2r squared minus 1 fourth r to the fourth power. We're going to evaluate this from r is equal to 0, which won't contribute anything, again, since we have multiplication by r in each term. And so we have 2 times 2 squared minus 1 over 4 times 2 to the fourth power. Go ahead and do the fraction math on that, and we should end up with four. We've got eight minus what, 32 divided by four. Uh, it's, it's, it's four. Yeah, that's not 32, that's eight minus 16 over four, which is eight minus four, which is absolutely four. Okay, and so now we're ready to do our outermost integral. And our outer integral is for theta, and we're gonna let it vary from zero to two pi. And our integrand is going to be the result of the prior integral. So 4 with respect to theta gives us 4 theta being evaluated from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi, uh, which is going to give us 8 pi. Once again, theta equals 0 is not going to contribute anything. So we're just going to take 4 times 2 pi to get 8 pi. All right. So what we found out is don't forget mass is equal to, don't forget this little guy with the, let's get the, uh, the density along for the ride, density times a pi. An extra blank slide in there that we didn't need. So, so far, what do we have from the last slide? We have mass is equal to density times eight pi. And so we're gonna take and substitute in for that. And that's going to allow us to reduce some things away. Pi is going to reduce away. So is our dense constant density. And 8 and 32 are going to reduce to 4. And we're left with that our z component of our center of mass is 4 thirds. And so putting that all together, we have x bar, y bar, comma, z bar, our center of mass is equal to zero, zero, four thirds. And we've done it. And that brings us to a close for today.